All right. Well, we're going to get this going in just a minute. I'm super excited about this. We're going to we're going to wait a couple minutes before we really get started so people can connect. Um, but if you're coming to us live, we're super excited that you're here. Go ahead and put in the comments where you're coming to us from. We are curious to see where everyone's coming to us from. We're actually streaming on 15 different well, simulcasting on 15 different networks, which is fun. Yeah. Super fun. Yeah, that's super great. fun, right? Right, guys? Yeah. Good to have our special guest with us today, right? Yeah, absolutely. Donna Rigney. Uh, Donna Rigney. Yeah. Dennis O'Brien. Dennis O'Brien. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. How are you guys doing? We're doing awesome. wonderful. Awesome. Great. <laughs> Excited wonderful, to be here. Wonderful, awesome, and great. Great. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> you didn't say fantastic. You're not doing fantastic? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, too. that too. Dennis, how about you? How are you doing? You know what? I'm doing fantastic. <laughs> oh, yeah, you are. <laughs> perfect. That's perfect. That's perfect. Bam. Bobby, how about you? Next level. I, we <laughs> ran out of adjectives for no, me. There's so. more. I'm, f I'm doing fabulous. Fabulous. Okay. <laughs> so you don't get fabulous. How right. are you, how are, super. Super. Yeah. Super. That's an amazing word. It is. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're just, if you're just joining us, we're going to get started here in just a second, but we want to make sure everyone has a chance to connect. So if you're just joining us, welcome. We're super excited about this uh, podcast today. I, it's going to be a really good one. Um, we've got with us Dennis O'Brien, Bobby Hobby, myself as Chris Benke, and Donna Rigney. Yeah. And we're going to dig into some pretty cool stuff. So I'm excited about that. But if you're joining us, put in the comments where you're coming to us from. So like, whatever that means to you could be my car while I'm driving. If that's the case, maybe don't text that. <laughs> be safe. Uh, could be at work. I'm supposed to be working, but I'm actually listening to this amazing show right now. You could put that in there. But just let us know where you're coming to us from. We're super excited about kicking this off, which we're going to do in just a minute. Probably one more minute. We'll wait. Good deal. So, Dennis, are you – both you guys are headed, are headed our way here in a, in a day or two, right? Yeah, we were just talking about that uh... – Don, uh, Don and I just did a uh, broadcast Sunday night on Solomon's yeah. Porch. We broadcast weekly our church service, and we were just talking about how excited we are to get back together. Don is the type of person, uh, when I first met her, I've only known her for like maybe six or seven months, but within two minutes, she be, she went from acquaintance to friend to family. That It was just a kindred wow. spirit. one of those type of relationships. Come on. Come That's on, really yeah. cool. <laughs> have you That's guys good. ever uh, been to Central Oregon? I no. have not. No. Okay. This will be great. This will be great. Yeah, you'll it's love fantastic. it. You'll love it. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous, and the uh, the heavens, the portal is open and primed mm -hmm. for what you guys carry. Yeah, it's gonna be. Awesome. It's going to be awesome. Well, if you guys are just joining us, you're just tuning in. Thank you for joining us. Maybe take a second and start a watch party if you're on Facebook or or whatever. Like if you're wherever you're watching, if it's Rumble or Facebook, we're actually streaming this on. Actually, I was, I was thinking after I said before, I was counting it up. I think it's 16 networks that we're streaming on right now. So welcome. If you're on one of those networks, put in the chat where you're coming to us from. We're excited to see that. And we're going to get started here in just a second. Donna, when are you coming? You're coming in. Uh, are you going to get here Thursday, Friday? When are you coming? Uh, we're going to come Friday. Friday. All right. Yes, Friday. Yeah. It's going to be Afternoon. good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. It's going to be, be we're, we're hoping for amazing, beautiful sunshine weather. Yes. Good. It'll only be 40 leaving, degrees, but it's going to be beautiful. Leaving. We're leaving Florida and the weather's just wonderful. <laughs> so uh, bring some sunshine with us. <laughs> yes, please bring the warmth yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. We definitely are going to need that. <laughs> and, but no, it's it's absolutely gorgeous. We're excited about it. If you guys aren't sure what we're talking about, there, we're going to get to that. We're, we'll get to that. So you got to stay to the very end because we're going to do some ministry time and we're going to talk about this event. But it's called The Gathering Movement and it's going to be here in Bend, Oregon. And we also are streaming digitally all around the world. So so we actually uh, have um, somewhere over 40 or 50,000 people watching at least the very first part of it. And it's going to be absolutely fantastic. So um, you want to register for that. It's a completely free event. But um, we'll talk about that later. Talk yeah. about that later. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. So if you're just watching, put in the chat, where are you coming to us from? We'd love to see that. We're actually simulcasting this on 16 different networks, I believe, if I do my math right. And it's going to be awesome. Well, I think we should. I think we should get going. Let's jump. You guys ready? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. 
Let's get started right now. Well, welcome everybody. This is going to be absolutely fantastic. We've got with us today, we've got Bobby Hobby, we've got Dennis O'Brien, and we've got Donna Rigney, and we are going to be diving into a prophetic look at what's happening right now in the world. And I'm very excited for this episode for a couple of reasons, but one of them is that there is so much happening. And I feel like there's more things than ever that people are afraid of. Like people are just genuinely afraid of everything, whether it's the markets crashing, financial situation, food supply, AI, there's just a lot of things to be afraid of. But I feel like um, that's sometimes the enemy's tactic to kind of get us distracted at what God's doing, because God is doing some amazing things. And, and we're gonna get into it a little bit later today, talking about this specific event that's coming up called The Gathering. But there's a lot of things like that that the Lord is doing. And I, I'd love to just, from a prophetic standpoint, take a look at that today. I think it's going to be fantastic. So thank you so much, Donna, for joining us and Dennis and Bobby uh, as well. I'd love to just hop in. So I think maybe set a found Bobby, let's start with you. Maybe set a foundation for, as we're, we're talking about all the stuff in the world that's happening, but we want to have a prophetic look at that. We want to hear what is the, like, what are we hearing from the Lord? Look at what's happening. Let's, let's start off, maybe lay a foundation for us, and then we'll just hop over to Donna and hear, and hear her thoughts on it. Yeah, well, like you said, God's doing so much. Uh, but at the same time, there's a clear path forward. It's just like the parting of the Red Sea, where there was a clear path forward. God is sending an east wind, and it's like we've been in three years of deliverance, crossing over um, into God's idea for the ecclesia, God's idea for what his glory looks like. And coming out of the church of man, if you will, man-centered, humanistic, to a church that is glorifying Jesus at center stage, where he is the reason for everything. He's the reason uh, and gets the glory for everything. We're talking about the son of the father, the famous one. And that shift is taking place right now. The other thing that I'm seeing is uh, there is literal superhuman, supernatural sons and daughters being birthed right now, forged in the fire wow. who know their God and do mighty exploits. I want to talk about that today. I want to talk about the level of signs and wonders that are coming to the mighty ones, to yeah. the sons and daughters Come today. On. Come on. That is, I mean, that's a good setup. Let's go. <laughs> that's good. So Donna, let, let's jump over to you. So, so from a prophetic standpoint with everything that's happening in the world and just kind of what's going on right now, what are, what are you hearing from the Lord? Like, what do you see going on right now? Well, I'm going to take us back a little bit, and I'm going to key into what you were saying at the beginning about fear. Uh, back in the beginning of 2020, just when COVID was starting to break out, things were starting to get shaky in the world. Um, the Lord brought me in the spirit into this beautiful, beautiful ballroom. And while I was in there, I've been like, gee, you guys are having this big party. You know, we got this disease starting to break out here on the earth. And uh, Jesus told me, oh, the, everyone in heaven knows the Father's on the throne. But he said, I want to show you something. And this never happened to me before. I've been on many heavenly visits, but I've never looked from heaven down to the earth. And I saw on the earth these two demons, and they were building like a campfire. And they were stoking this fire. They had long pitchforks. They were throwing all these things on the fire. And the Lord said to me, he said, What's going to be happening? He said, the, the enemy is going to be stoking the fire of fear and putting out fear, coals from this fire of fear all over the world. And he's going to be using people with evil agendas and different politicians, news media outlets, different ones. He's going to be using to put fear out all over the world. And that's just what you were saying, that there's been just one thing after another, whether it was afraid of getting COVID or, or yeah. all the different fears that in the economics, so many things, uh, food supply, so many things. And he said that this is going to backfire because all this fear that he's pouring out all over the world is going to cause my children to come running to my arms. Wow. They're going to run. On. Yeah. They're going to run to me 
for comfort, for help, for solace in this time. And that's what I believe. That's where we're at right now is that there's been a great turning and a great returning. The prodigals are returning home to the father that, you know, got off into the world doing their things, uh, lukewarm Christianity. We're seeing people running back to God where religion isn't answering our problems, isn't helping us. A relationship with Jesus is the answer where we wow. need the Holy Spirit. We need the true glory of God and the presence of God. And that's releasing a holy hunger in people for the things of God and for God's presence. So I believe we're coming to that place. And the Lord told me, he said, there's three attributes that my people need to have in order to experience the glory of God and to be filled to overflowing with my glory. And they are hunger, humility, and honor. We need wow. to be hungry for God. God allowed the enemy. He saw what the enemy was doing. God's not taken by surprise. He showed me what he was going to do before he did it. So God's not surprised by all this stuff he's been throwing at us. And God's right. like, oh yeah, watch what I do with it. It's going to backfire <laughs> because that's going to cause my children to run to me. You're trying right. to separate my children from me and Come it's going to do just the opposite. My children Come are going to run into my arms like the prodigal son returning home to the father in that parable that Jesus taught. So this is the hour we're in right now where people are running back to God to get the help that we need. And he told me hunger, humility, and honor are the qualities that we need in order to be filled with that glory. And so we're seeing hunger like never before. Humility. We're humbling ourselves before God and saying, God, you're all I need. I, I don't have it. My, my government doesn't have it. I depend on you. Humility is truth. Without you, I can't do anything, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Right. I can be helped. I can get all I need from you. Right. And honor. We're seeing an explosion of worship and honoring God. We have a church service on Friday night. We call it a glory gathering. And people come from all over the United States just to come to encounter the glory of God. Wow. We've had them come. We've had them come from Oregon recently. Yeah. Yeah, come on. Wow. Yeah, California. They fly over Texas, Minnesota, Michigan, all the different states. They come and they some people we have a deliverance session too. They come and they get deliverance. Come on. For the service and then they come and they participate in the service because they are so hungry. For yeah. the glory of God. And what do they come to do? To honor God. And that's what God wants right now in this hour. And what's he going to do? He's going to pour out his glory to such a degree that the whole world is going to be covered in his glory. Yeah. Come on. That's so come good. Come on. That's, that's good. really good. That's good. So, so Dennis, um, what are you, what are you hearing? Like what, from your perspective, from a prophetic perspective, what are you hearing from the Lord? You know, there's a um, attribute of God that universally, I think we all just don't like. Well, let me speak for myself. And that is the timing of God. You know, if we were to be honest with ourselves, we're not comfortable in that peace with the 1159 scenario, right? <laughs> and uh, we don't like the phrase, uh, delay is not denial. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's, let's be honest. The timing of God just drives us nuts because we're just <laughs> impatient. We don't have, you know, his intelligence. We can't see the end from the beginning. We're not Alpha and Omega. And so we yeah. always struggle with this timing issue. And what God has been speaking to me is, which is good news, especially concerning timing, is we're getting ready for an Isaiah 54 moment. And what I mean by that is when, he, when Isaiah said, Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud. And so, so God is saying again prophetically, I believe that, look, guys, I know it's been tough. The baby has not been born. We've been in challenging situations. We've been in painful situations. It's been a rough three years. Our destiny's been put on hold. 
I know it's tough, but it said your response should be sing. Are you kidding me? Sing about that situation. Cry aloud because why? Because his promise is you're going to have more children than that of the married wife. Even though you look like you're in this challenging situation now, and it doesn't look like it's going to change, that baby's coming. That right. victory is coming. That right. destiny is coming. And that's what people have to hold on to. Don't look how it looks in the natural. Yeah. This thing is coming, and it's coming quickly. And I'm right. reminded, like, when, when my wife, she's had, well, we had four kids. And, like, if any husband knows, if you've been in, in, the, in the hospital room while your wife's going through labor, it's quite an experience. And I don't mean to downplay the wife's part. She's got the hardest part. Yeah. Yeah. Let's face it, guys. When you're in that labor room, right, when it gets to transition, and I believe spiritually we're in a transition time. Wow, come on. We've been through a long process of labor these past three years. But we're right at the end of transition. Now, transition is really the hardest and most painful part of the labor process. And it's also the shortest part. So when God says, sing, O barren, the baby's coming. Yes, it's been difficult. And yes, the heat's been turned up. And yes, it looks like, oh, my God, is this thing ever going to end? It's right. really the shortest part of the labor process. And, look, and we know during that transition time as husbands, that's when your hand gets clawed by your wife with her nails as she goes through <laughs> that, that transition pain. That's when she starts cursing you every name under the book, <laughs> the one that loves you. You've been there, right? But then that baby comes. Hmm. And everything is just okay. And so God is saying, look, at, there's a set time. There's an appointed time. There's a fullness of time. There's a Kairos moment when I'm going to step out of eternity and I'm going to come into your time. And I'm going to just take care of this whole thing. I'm going to show up and take care of this thing because that baby is coming. And I'm yeah. reminded of the scripture in, in Isaiah 66 that says, I bring to... Do I bring to the moment of birth and not give delivery? Is God going to allow all this labor that we've been through three months and we're, and we're ready to give birth and not bring delivery? Of course he is. Right. And the other side of this timing issue is, is there's, I believe, an acceleration of time happening. I believe that the Amos uh, uh, prophecy of that the plowman overtake the reaper that the latter and the former rain will be in the same month i believe we're in that time frame now also that it's not going to be like it's been like oh my god i've been in this process for 10 years and i finally right. got a promotion you know that day is over that dispensation is over we are in the acceleration of time where so reap so reap so reap it's an instantaneous simultaneous thing and so i just want to encourage the people that the baby's coming the baby's coming, and it's coming fast, and we are getting ready for it. It's such an acceleration of blessings, deliverances, healings. It's going to make your head spin what's about to happen in the kingdom of God. Wow, that's so good, that's isn't it? That's amazing. Full of hope. I was thinking while you were talking, Dennis, about um, Elizabeth and Mary connecting and what was being birthed inside of them. Uh, was leaping with excitement, mm. couldn't um, stand it, couldn't hold it. And I feel like that's part of the reassessing too right now is connecting with people who make your baby leap. You know, just the ones that you're going to be around, the ones that you're deciding, wow, these are the people that I'm running with, high levels of faith, and the ones who are going after God with an insatiable hunger. Who are you hanging out with that is making your baby leap? Wow. And I feel like there's just a – I just need to say it. I just need to say that there's a transition uh, and, and God never wants us to settle. God wants us to move forward. We're coming out. We're ascending just like what was said out of this three-year transition now. We're ascending the other side of the Red Sea, and there's there's a shift that's happening, but it's for signs and wonders. Right. It's for the glory of God. We're ascending the hill of the Lord right now, and and I love that. The, the word says, who may ascend, but the word for who— the actual Hebrew word for that English word who is uh, actually pronounced in the Hebrew me. So oh, wow. in the word who is the answer. Who may ascend? Me. Wow. God has prepared a way. So this is what's happening. Man, that is 
That is so good. So I, I feel like what, so it's encouraging. It's incredible. What you're saying, I love the, the analogy. And I love the way both of you guys have kind of helped us see that, like, that's a really powerful word picture. So, so, for, so what do you say, um, Don, we'll go to you next. What do you say to the person who hears what you're saying, but they're kind of like, well, yeah, but I don't know how that, like, what does that have to do with me personally? So Bobby, you're talking about, well, that you are the actual in the answer is the answer. Like in the reply is the answer is kind of what you're saying. Yeah. But like, how do you make that practical for someone? Like the person that's listening to this and they're, you know, on their lunch break, listening to this. And they're like, I don't know, like, I kind of like what you're saying, but like, how do I fit into that? What would you say to them? How, how what's their part? How do they fit in? Well, what I'm seeing in, in, my, in our ministry is, uh, you know, the scripture, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. That this is the time for us individually to stop seeking after God and we will see God meet our needs. Uh, I'm going to give a quick testimony of, of something that happened this past Friday night. Uh, this woman uh, watches our shows on Elijah's dreams and whatnot and the Lord spoke to her. She was lives about three hours away in South Florida. That if she would go to the meeting, he was going to heal her. So she obeyed. She sought after God. And so we all have our issues that we're going through. This woman had chronic pain in her ankle. That she'd been to the doctors for years. She'd never gotten any help. Had to walk with a cane and was just suffering terribly. And God spoke to her and said, go to this meeting. Come and seek me. And so she drove through, got in her car all by herself, drove three hours, came to the church service. And at the end of the service, our service lasts about five or six hours long. So it's a long night. So at the end of the night, I go and I release the glory on every single person. And when I did, she said that as I came to her and I just released the glory on her, she saw this big, enormous angel. And this angel had an ax in his hand. And it came and it came over and it just cut this thick, thick chain she had around her ankle, off her ankle. And instantly when the angel did that, the pain was gone and she was healed. No more cane, dancing, rejoicing, singing. So what did she have to do? She had to take the step. And this is what I encourage people. Wherever you're at, whatever is going on in your life, seek after him. Anybody, scripture, he says in scripture, anyone who seeks me will find me. I will be found that the, by those who seek after me. So we've got to put things aside and run to him for his help. And he's right, right there waiting with his arms open. And we've seen this happen time and time and time again, where the people come and they sign up for deliverance and go through deliverance session and they get set free. They come in miserable and they leave happy and rejoicing because they're free. People come to a church service and they come to encounter the glory of God. They receive the glory of God and he meets their needs, whether it's a physical healing, another woman, I put my hand in her chest and I read it in one of the comments after the service that I felt God's doing something. I told her God's doing something in your heart. And I met her spiritual heart, her emotional heart. That he was healing something. And she said afterwards, she said, I'm not upset by the things I'm usually upset by. There's peace on me and I'm just, I'm just changed. I'm different. I'm responding different to life. Just a touch, just a touch from God is all we need in this hour. And that what he wants to do nationally and worldwide, he wants to do it individually in our lives too. He wants to bring his resurrection power to all of us. He wants to restore us, heal us. He's not just talking about, I'm going to restore your land and leave you miserable. No, no. We are part of the land. We are part of the people. He wants to restore everyone. But we've got to take that step to go run and seek him. That's what I feel very strongly. Oh, that is so good. That's yeah. Really good. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let's Man. just take a pause on that and just say, yeah, Lord. I mean, his idea is always next level for what it looks like to restore our land, to right. make us whole. Um, he's not interested in just just a, a, a moment. He's he's huge that way. Dennis, speak into that. What, what's what's yeah. on your heart to add to that? You know, you you just 
you just read my mind. Uh, you know, Jesus said that I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. It's, it's the main tenet of his mission statement to build the church as the means and the instrument to bring salvation to the world. And the devil, knowing that, has that's his biggest target, the church. And we've seen that evidence in the past few years where the church has taken a tor torpedo hit, broadsided, unexpectedly, because the devil hates that instrument that God uses, the church. And God already is marshalling a counterattack of what the devil did. He's already bringing restoration and restitution. He's getting it all lined up, and uh, he's ready to launch this thing. Because we're starting to see glory showers being released over this nation, over the world, where revivals are hitting university campuses and colleges. And that's just a foretaste. You know, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. We're, we're going to see a deluge of glory coming. And that's, that's God's uh, uh, attack back on the devil, where he's going to release his glory, healing and deliverance. And, 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 the, and the presence and power and love of God in, in, in meetings all over this nation. But paradoxically, you have to take into consideration, too, speaking about restoration, restitution. We have to have an ear also that I think Jesus is echoing what he spoke in Revelations 2 and 3 in this hour also. I think he's also saying, he that have an ear to hear let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And when you look at that chapter in Revelation, you see that the church was doing some things right, and Jesus commended them. He said, yeah, you're doing this. You're doing a good job here. But he also spent some time commenting on, guys, you're not doing so well over here, and you better change, and you better knock it out. And, you know, things like lukewarmness and, Mm -hmm. And all kinds of things that they were missing from the original design out of the book of Acts. He had to warn them. And I, and I see that happening today where there's this paradox where, yes, God is coming to restore and bring restitution to his church. Because he's a faithful God. He's a loving God. He's always redemptive. But at the same time, he has to address the lukewarmness, the complacency the compromise, the yeah. spirit of religion. And like Bobby said, the church of man versus the church of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's got to be rooted out before the glory clouds really open up. In other words, he's saying, look, guys, I can't allow to pour out new wine into this old wineskin. I've got to take this wineskin off of you first before I can pour out my glory. You need to have a new wineskin. So... At the same time, he's purging, and at the same time, he's blessing and restoring, but it's for our own good. And, and that's what I feel one of the mission statements of the gathering is all about, is we're like uh, uh, spiritual uh, personal shoppers, where, where people come in and we say, you don't want to wear that wine skin. It doesn't look good on you anymore. It doesn't, it's not too becoming on you. Here, try this on. Try this new outfit on. Try this wine skin on. And that's what we do. We lovingly, speaking the truth in love, bringing conviction to say, get that wineskin, that old thing off you. It doesn't work. God's yeah. about to do a new thing. That's how we got in trouble in the first place, because we laid back complacent. We laid back with compromise, and we allowed entertainment to replace anointing in our churches. He yeah, said, this can't happen anymore, because I'm about to do this great new thing, and he's going to do it. Yeah. So... Um, I'm sorry, I'm getting on my on my soapbox. I'm oh, I love it. It's good. Good box. It's a good box to stand on. <laughs> love that. Well, Dennis, I, I think what you're what you're setting up perfectly is is kind of talking about where we want to go and talking about where you're you and Delora are purposely going with the gathering movement and, and it just ties in perfectly with what you're talking about too Donna like why right now is such a critical time for this and and that the timing of it is not by accident either like the Lord's timing like Dennis I was so relating to what you were saying about being frustrated with the timing 
like personally, I'm literally going through some things right now where I'm like, man, I really, really want to know badly what God's plan is. And he's like, don't worry about it. Like, but I, but I'm trying Lord, but you know, so I can relate to that. I know a lot of people can, I feel like you guys are setting this up perfectly to um, talk about this thing that's coming up literally this week called the gathering movement. We'll be streaming this live all over the world. It's also here in Bend, Oregon. We actually had a few people that have transitioned from in-person to online. So if you were trying to get tickets for in-person and it was sold out, there are a few available. So um, we'll put the link in there for in a minute for that. But I think, what would be perfect, Bobby, is if you would talk for just a minute about this um, prophetic um, vision that you had and how it relates to this video mm -hmm. clip and what you're seeing and how it's related to this specific event and the series of events that are happening that um, Delora and Dennis are, are doing with the gathering movement. Yeah, absolutely. Two years ago, it started for me where the Lord just began to show me nonstop two major things. And two major things were um, that Jesus was going to take center stage in his church, that there was the church of the Pharisees that was sort of growing up the wheat with the tares right alongside the church of Jesus, and that he was going to literally take his church back and be the center stage. He actually said that um, it, would, he, it would be like a Jesus revolution. <laughs> two years ago, I began well, to just prophesy into that and pray into that. Um, and then he said, and the second thing was that deliverance would become one of the top three ministries in the body of Christ. And that me personally, I needed to make space for it. I needed to create a transformation center and just do some things around here just to sow into it. But it wasn't too long after that where just friends, like what we're hearing on, on the show today, they're all getting into deliverance too. And they're like, hey, we need to make a space for this. People need to get free. Yeah, come There's on. some glory we're seeing on the horizon, but you don't, that just, doesn't happen one day. You've got to prepare the house mm -hmm. for the glory of God to come yeah. into, like in those days of Solomon. And so we're like, okay, Lord, how do we help people get set free? And we're seeing all kinds of generational stuff. So it turns out this year, the two movies that come out are the Jesus Revolution <laughs> and come out in Jesus' name. It's just a total coincidence. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so we're just like, okay, this is happening now. You yeah. can, just like Dennis said, that funnel is getting smaller and smaller. Yes. And the time between the time he prophesies it and the time that it manifests is is now shorter mm -hmm. and so we're looking to just steward the presence of the lord and this glory that was yeah. the third thing the glory of god coming to his people and so um a good friend of ours johnny and, and elizabeth Enlows, uh they let us know and and let um the o'briens know that hey we're an apostolic resource center we we'd love to host anything that they're doing on the west coast and so as soon as we started praying with them talking um to the o'briens about this event and what god had put on their hearts for the gathering i began to have this vision of these outposts, embassies of the kingdom. And the Lord's always spoken to me about, hey, we've got the prophetic. They've been speaking of this hour that's coming for decades, but now it's time to put apostolic feet to prophetic hope. Come on. And so we're like, all right, this is that hour. We're prepared for it. We've been praying for it. And the Lord told us it's time to go digital. It's time yeah. to go global. Come on. And so I began to see these outposts all over the globe, fire, beacons, yeah. um, furnaces, if you will, and that the gathering was going to go global. And, um, and so the Lord just sort of let us put this video together for that and that I think speaks to it all. And people are catching the fire in their regions. And this really is, and some have been tending that fire for decades, like Anna and Simeon, you've been waiting for the glory of God to hit your region. And the Lord is like, don't you dare stop one second before that inferno right. flame is lit in your region. Right. Can you imagine Come on. falling asleep 10 minutes before God says it's time to light <laughs> that flame? Don't do yeah, it. Don't Just do like that. stay yes. in and, and this is that hour. So I want to show that video. Yeah, let's do it. Quick, short video. Let's go to that. Here's what it looks like.
Wow. wow. So powerful. That's wow. very powerful. These flames, they're not only connecting us globally. I mean, we learned during this last three years that the globe is super small, but these flames are actually connecting us to the great cloud of witnesses and those who've gone before us that have literally ignited the fires. Yeah. We're drinking from a well, some in cases that we didn't even dig. Right. It was dug for us. and But now we're redigging some things. So Donna, speak to that. What is God sharing with you? Oh my goodness. Every Everything you're saying, everything you're saying, God has shown me and is implementing. Uh, right from the very beginning, it, I'm just like in awe. But we started um, a year and a half, two years ago, doing uh, our service in a church. We had to rent it because so many people were coming to our house. And so it's called the Church on the Rock. And when we started it, the Lord told me that we were not to have a worship team that he was going to be sitting on the platform, on the stage, he would be sitting up there, and that he was receiving all the glory and the honor. He didn't want any entertainment. He didn't want anything to distract from him receiving all the glory. Oh, I'm just like, from every single thing you said, Bobby, one after another, after another, God's been doing with us. Wow. And That's so we, I, obeyed, I obeyed him. We have no worship team. We use the iPod, we play the music. I tell the congregation, you're the worship team. And wow. there have been children that have come to the service, little children, they come, like I said, they come from all over the United States. Every week we have anywhere from 100 to 200 people that show up for the service on Friday night. Wow. And so, and they're just like one big family. They don't know each other, but it's this unity and this love, this sovereign thing, because there's a portal open, the glory's there. So these children, a number of different children have drawn pictures. Some drew pictures and told us that they saw Jesus sitting on the platform with an wow. angel on either side, wow. sitting, receiving our worship. Oh, yeah. come on. That's, that's one. Num that, so church is not like a, a, we, we go for a couple of hours uh, praying for the nation, praying for all the different things going on. Then we preach a message. Then we get into worship. The worship is the highlight of the night. And then from there, release the glory and pray over everyone for the glory. And the glory of God is highlighted. That's wow. the, Church is not like church. What he's wow. having us do is completely different. And I'm telling you, we start at 6 o'clock. The majority of nights, we're there until midnight, sometimes 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning with the glory of God. So that's one thing. Then the other thing you said was deliverance. God highlighted to you that deliverance. A year and a half ago, he had us start a deliverance ministry at the church. Right now, we have deliverance going on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. I have trained people. And right now, there are about 40 people trained in deliverance. Wow. They're doing deliverance. People come from, they make appointments, and they come from all over the United States. Even we've had people come from other countries. And come wow. and go through deliverance and get totally set free. That's the second thing you said was the deliverance. Wow. As far as the glory of God, that's the whole essence. We even had one night, we were praying one night for Donald Trump to get back into office. <laughs> we were praying for a good two hours for this. Somebody wow. came late to church. And as they drove up, they saw this big rainbow over the church and then from the center of the rainbow was this gold coming down. And now the church was to the right. If you go on my website, you'll see it. The church was to the right. And you see this gold coming on the top of the church. Oh, wow. Actual physical manifestation. Wow. Another week, somebody said, can I take a picture with you? And they stood beside me. And we, I said, sure. It was at the end of the night. Took a picture. And here is the shape of Jesus, the glory of God behind us in clear light. Clear as any, it's on my website and it's on, you can see it. The glory of God, it's on Facebook too. You'll see wow. the glory of God standing behind us. We has, the glory of God is so incredibly powerful. Then the Lord said to me, okay, I'm assigning you two assignments. He said, you're to go and you're to open portals so that my, the heavens will be open in regions and eventually they will spread and spread and spread and connect. Yeah. And he said, and you are to go and release my glory. He said, I've given yeah. you my glory. Now I want you to go and release it. And then I get connected with Delora and Dennis who have 
And I'm thinking, how am I going to go to all these places? And I don't know how to do this. And I'm connected with them as part of the gathering to do what? Go open portals and bring the glory. Come and on. God's just Come doing on. it all. Now, the other thing that you did, Bobby, which just I'm like the, that clip, that movie clip you just showed. I've gone in the spirit a number of times and I sit on the top of a mountain with Jesus. Sometimes the father's with us and we sit there and look over the earth. And what do I see? I see fires being lit all yep. over the earth. And, and this has gone on for a number of years. I'm like, what do these fires represent? And Jesus told me, he said, these fires represent the fire of revival. He said, some of the times when I bring you here and you see fires, that's the enemy who's lighting fires because mm -hmm. he wants to stop, abort what I'm doing. He's not going to be able to, but he's going to be lighting fires of problems and issues. Yeah, That's some of the fires that I've seen, you told me. But more recently, just a week or two ago, he brought me in the spirit again to the top of that mountain. Again, I saw all those fires lit. He said, these are the fires of revival that are being lit now and more are coming. Eventually, they're all going to join together. And then I saw this a tremendous firework display in the heavens above. Huge. The whole heavens were lit up. And he said, what you're seeing now is a reflection of the celebration that's going on, on. in yeah. heaven over yeah. my prodigal nation, my yeah. prodigal on. children returning to me. It says in heaven that, that all heaven rejoices over one who comes back to God. Yeah. Imagine the celebration when our nation and then spreads to the nations of the world, when the world returns back to God. He said, this is that you're seeing right now, this firework display, he said, it's coming to the earth. And when you see it on the earth, the great celebration over the freedom, over the glory, over the, the deliverance that I'm going to bring to your nation, the grand rescue event, he calls it. He yep. said, that's just a reflection. When we see that celebration, that's just a reflection of the heavenly celebration that's going on in heaven. Wow. Great, great that is, wow, that is, that is so, that is so perfect. Like you can feel, you can just feel the yeah, momentum. Can, yeah. I feel like yeah. the last several, you know, episodes, we, we really talked about this momentum that we're all feeling and this is no different. I feel like this incredible, exciting momentum. And that's really what you're talking about. So I, Dennis, I'm going to go to you next, but before I do, I want to let you guys know, like if you were streaming this into 16 different places, simulcasting it. So um, I want to make sure everybody knows what's going on. So this Saturday we have this event that uh, we've been referring to. It's called the gathering movement it'll be here locally in bend oregon it's this saturday it's free it's also being streamed all over the world we're anticipating 40 plus thousand 40 thousand plus people watch um, um this event this weekend so it, it's going to be massive you can register for free we've just decided to actually include with the free registration whether you're in person or online the replay access. So even if you like have to work, you can't attend, or you're not sure you're going to be able to go to all of it, or like most of us, you're going to want to watch it more than once. The replay access is included in the price, but you have to register to watch it and you have to register for the replay. One registration, but you have to register to get access to the event live and also the replay so that we can have the right amount of server capacity and so forth. Because when you can imagine when you stream to this many places at this size, it's super important to have that. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be amazing. Um, and I think that the timing of it is not by accident. It's just a global thing that's happening. We're seeing these things just like in the video happening all over the world. Everybody is playing their part and your part is required. You, like Bobby said, you can't be asleep when it's your turn to light the thing. It's critical. And this is one of those things. So figure out how to come figure out how to get here so what i want you to do and then i want to hear from you dennis because as a, a co-founder of the gathering movement the, I, I want you to speak into why this is so important but before you do that i just want anybody that is going to attend put i'm in put like i'm in in the chat i'm registering right now once you're registered put i'm in and then put where you're from so that we know because this also actually helps us keep track of uh, the actual need we need, the capacity to be able to make sure it is a flawless 
event and it will be it, it will be fully interactive it's not a camera in the back of the room it's designed from the ground up to be fully interactive so come with anticipation and excitement it's going to be amazing so um, also stick around to the very end because after we talk about this i want to spend a couple minutes for some ministry time okay. with you guys as well so so don't go anywhere even if you're registered don't go anywhere you can do some ministry time but dennis why the gathering movement why now, I mean, we've talked about it a little bit, but but lay it lay it out for us. Like, why is this so important? You know that um, prophetic video that Bobby had showed is such an accurate representation of what happens at the gathering and why we're doing what we're doing. That fire that was shown in that clip. There's there's revival fires like we've addressed. And that's certainly a major part of what we're doing, that God wants to bring healing and deliverance to his children. He wants to bless, set the captives free. That's been his mission since he walked this earth. But those same fires also melt chains. Like we're talking about deliverance. I so agree with you, Bobby, but, but deliverance our, our, our gathering movement wants to set the captives free. We want the chains of bondage. We want those that were oppressed by the devil to be set free. He whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And, you know, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. We don't hear that preached anymore. I, I don't know where that scripture went, but it's like the, the, the church has become like a sanctuary city for the devil recently. It's like... Yeah. The, the devil feels protected there. He's, he's not prosecuted anymore. He's not extradited anymore. He's safe. It's a sanctuary city. And, and deliverance has to come back in the church. And I'm telling you, we're, we're not storm chasers. We're devil chasers. So you, you come to our <laughs> gathering, and you come with a bondage. You come with an addiction. You come with an oppression. You come with a, with a possession. I'm telling you right now, you're going to walk out of that meeting free because we, we wake up and eat devils for breakfast. <laughs> uh, we're, we're with Jesus. We come to destroy the works of the devil. He's mm. not getting away with it anymore. So, um, you know, it, it's expect the unexpected because we just let the Holy Ghost rule and reign in the service. Yes, we come prepared, but at any given moment, the Holy Ghost can take charge. And, and don't let the unfamiliarity of things throw you. You know, it's like uh, I always use the illustration in, in the cartoon Peanuts. Linus used to carry around his, his little blanket, right? And everywhere he went, he had to have that little blanket because it gave him comfort. It was familiar to him. Yeah. What we don't realize is when we carry around that familiar blanket, is that at some point that blanket has moth-eaten holes in it. It becomes very dirty. It becomes smelly. And we don't realize because we're, we're disguised by the familiarity. We're lulled to sleep by it. So yeah. let go of your preconceived concepts of church as you know it. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're going to praise and worship. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus. We're going to preach. We're going to have the signs following the preaching of the word. We're going to have prophecy. We're going to have words of knowledge. We're going to deliver people. We're going to cast out devils in church. Come on. The devil comes in. He's not staying. He's going out. So I didn't say that to scare you. I said that to encourage you that you're going to be walking out of that, that meeting set free. And here's the biggest miracle. We've seen people get out of wheelchairs. We've seen miraculous healings and deliverances. But I'm going to tell you the greatest miracle that, that witnesses to me, and that's the transformation of a person's heart. I don't, after being in this meeting, and, and the five hours go by like, like a minute, yeah. people write us and testify that they are literally changed. Their personalities, their heart, they're, they're more kind their unforgiveness goes. Yeah. It's, it's just it's a dramatic transformation of people's lives. They have hope again. Their faith is encouraged. They, 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 they're ready to fight another day. That transformation gives us the greatest pleasure, more so than people getting out of wheelchairs, because that they just take with them the rest of their walk in Jesus Christ. So 
Yeah. Come expecting the unexpected. Uh, anything and everything is going to happen. Come on. That's so good. <laughs> <clears throat> we got a word just before, uh, you know, the pandemic began to roll out. And that was that Kobe is coming. But they saw it, Kovi dash D, and they said, for many, this is this D is digital, and they didn't even know what COVID yeah. was. They didn't know, and that was way before it happened. Another Kobe coincidence. is coming, but D is for digital, right? And God is going to explode on the digital front, yeah. and so we begin as an apostolic resource center to get. Um, on the front end of this and saying, okay, so how do we take our conferences to the next level and not just put a camera at the back of the room, but have people uh, interactive, have a studio like this where people can come and just prophesy to the nations. Yeah. And we started seeing healing break out. Yeah. You know, we are like, we do, we love doing fire tunnels where people are just getting blasted by the glory. So we thought, Hey, let's take one of our, our youngers with the handheld cameras and just start walking through the the fire yeah. tunnels yes. and people would get healed as though they were in person. Like there's literally yep. no distance in the presence of the Lord. That's so right. we started That's experiencing right. that somebody whose lungs had collapsed, we prayed over them and they were just completely open right then and yeah. there. And so we knew this is the beginning of the beginning of the beginning of seeing. It's almost like when Jesus, the centurion soldier said to Jesus, hey, just Get me on a Zoom call and say the word. I don't even need you to come. Right. We can do this over the planet, over the airways. This is the frequency. This is the air game that the body of Christ is launching right now. And so those of you who are watching from around the globe, now we've got some data on this. Yep. We've seen the supernatural ramp up. And I'm just feeling, even while Don, Donna and Dennis are talking today, um, the glory of God just descending right here yeah. in, in this room. And so there's something happening. I think we need to, if we have time to jump in. Let's, let's do some ministry in the time that we have left. We have, you know, seven minutes. Let's do some ministry real quick. Before we do that, though, put it's register for this. You get replay access. So I saw some people in the comments. Oh, like I'm going to be at this, you know, Bethel doing a special thing. Like, no problem. Replay. And just like Bobby is saying, there's no, there's someone that is going to hear this 20 years from now. And, and the Lord is going to touch them just as powerfully as if they were live here in Bend, Oregon. So it, there's no distance. There's no time with the Lord. So the, so sign up because the access is free and the replay is free. And if you're just tuning in, and you didn't hear this. We actually had some people switch from online to digital. So we actually do have a few in-person tickets that have become available. So if you wanted to get in person, like now's Come your on, chance. I would not it. wait around, like yeah. go and register, but let's do some ministry. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, when Donna was talking about fear earlier, I heard the name Suzanne. Uh, just in my right ear, Susan, Suzanne, I'm pretty sure it was Suzanne. And um, I saw that the Lord, I needed to speak to, the Lord was just literally delivering you from fear. Um, I saw um, like almost five years ago, four and a half years ago, that there was just this gripping traumatic moment where um, something uh, just jumped on you and it just began to grab your emotions and you begin to feel overwhelmed. And so much so to where um, it created so like a chain reaction within you. And what I'm seeing now is that you've been carrying the load. Uh, and, and, and I know this is hard to say sometimes, but carrying the load for generations, like you do super well in being there for people. But some of that is the Lord releasing you from a responsibility that was never yours to carry. And I see Jesus just saying, give that to me, Suzanne, give that to me right now. And you'll find that that, that fear and that feeling of overwhelm, overwhelmness is leaving you right now. And I could feel that going. So just say that, Father, I give you my fear. Jesus, I give you this fear and I give you any false responsibility that my generation has walked in. And you'll find that that fear is now leaving you in the name of Jesus right now. All fear has to go. And I just proclaim this freedom over you in Jesus name. Donna and Dennis, jump in if, if the Lord's showing you anything. Um, I'm, I'm going to release the glory uh, like I did at church last Friday night and that angel appeared 
and cut that chain off that was causing so much pain to that woman. I feel like there's many, many people that are in pain. Some of it's physical pain and some of it is like a chain around your head it's a, and your heart. It's emotional, it's in your mind and it's in your heart. God, God doesn't want us to be in pain in any way. Jesus came and died on the cross. He took all our pain, all our suffering, all infirmities on the cross with him so that we would be free. So I'm going to release the glory. And then I'm going to ask the Lord to send angels right now to every single person that has any kind of chain of fear on you or pain on you. Oh, yes. to be set free from it. Yes. So Father, just by faith now receive. The Lord's told me you just release my glory and I will go and pour my glory on, on all those watching. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I release your glory. Oh, oh, I release yes. your glory on every yes. single person watching this video at any time that they watch it. I yes. release your glory. Let your glory come and from the top of their head, completely cloak them, cover yes. them, immerse them, saturate them, soak them, marinate them in your glory. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Oh, I pray as your glory fills them that yes. angels are released to every single one and that these angels cut off the chains of pain, pains mm. in your heart, oh, pains in your mind and in your emotions, pains any place, any pain, anywhere in your bodies. Oh, I command in the name of Jesus, pain, you yes. go Yes. Now, yes. Come on. Us, yes. People. Yes. Now, in the name of yes. Jesus. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, we are a body ministry, which means when one suffers, we all suffer. When one rejoices, we all rejoice. And I'm, and I'm feeling. Uh, the weariness of the saints of God that these past three years we've been talking about, uh, it's gotten to some people. <clears throat> some are very weary. They're ready to give up. Some have lost their hope. Some have lost their faith. They've just been struggling and fighting for so long. They're just worn out. And so I want to pray for those people. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just pray that you undergird the weary, that you, the spirit of comfort would come upon them, that there would be a rejuvenation of their spirit, their soul, their mind, Lord God, that you would open up their eyes to see the divine plan for their life, that all things work together for good. That in this process, they'll come out stronger, deeper, more yes. intimate with you. That this will be a good thing, a blessed thing. That you have them in the palm of your hand, and you will never leave them nor forsake them. Yes. You've got this all in control. But you do feel their pain, and you will minister to their hearts and to their souls. So I just pray for great grace to come upon them yes, God. 